This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. And guys, we are back here on Think Tech Hawaii with the Prince of Investing show. Back here in the beautiful state of Honolulu. Well, that's where the show is airing, but I'm in Denver, Colorado. If you take a look behind me, it looks a little different from what you've seen on the show. Um, I relocated, and by relocating, now I'm in Denver, Colorado. I was off the show for about two weeks, but due to technology, we are back live here in the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado, being in Honolulu, Hawaii, but that's all right. That's fine. But anyway, I know you guys probably tuned in today, and you guys can see the title. We're going to be talking about a bear market. We're going to be talking about the market, the downside, how to get prepared for it. Anybody that's following the market right now, you know the market is extreme, not extremely high, but it's not all time high. You know the market, we're in a uh, bull market, which is the opposite of a bear market. We're in a bull market. We see equities and stocks are doing pretty good. You know everything is going up. I think the uh, the S and P five hundred now is up around about nineteen to twenty percent for twenty seventeen, and which is not that bad, right? So a lot of people are joining. Um, and there's also don't forget, can't forget about the juggernaut right now, Bitcoin, which is uh, jumping between seventeen hundred, seventeen thousand to nineteen thousand. You know, it's handled with a thousand percent return this year. So we have all type of. Um, great experiences that we have going on in the market right now on the upside for people that have better with the market. Now we're going to be talking about what if the market crashes? What if the downturn happens, right? What is a bear market? All the other great stuff that we're going to discover, how to get you prepared, how uh, the things that I learned, the exact uh, funds out there, the way you can prepare your portfolio for the market. I know you're probably asking yourself, Prince, what make you think of a bear market when it's a bull market? Hey, you don't think about building a ship when it's flooding. You build it before the flood, right? So that's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to talk about, what is a bear market? The bear market itself is a 20% drop, a 20% drop in one of the major indexes for over two months, a 20% drop. The last bear market we went into was October of 2017 until March of 2009 when we bottomed out and we turned into a bull market. Now the thing about it is from 1900 to 2015, we've had 32 bear markets, 32 bear markets that we have experienced. Now we don't have a question of if the bear market is gonna happen, the question is when. So we know this is going to happen again. We have seen this happen 32 times in the last 115 years. We have over 115 years of data that says a bear market will come again. On average, this happens between every three, uh, three and a half years, the bear market happens. Every three and a half years, that's when we kind of see the bear market come into play. So right now we haven't seen it since 2009, and some people say it's eight years or whatever the case may be, because you know eight years ago that's when we experienced um, the 2008 market collapse, and in 2000 we see the market collapse again from the tech bubble. But these bear markets is always going to happen. Now what got me onto this topic? Besides when it was going to happen, I was reading Tony Robbins' book, Unshakable. And when I was reading his book, Unshakable, what it did was uh, it had a section and it was talking about the bear market. And a guy by the name Peter Murlock, I think it's Peter Murlock or Peter Murlock. Peter Murlock, I think it is, if I'm saying it. Uh, hopefully I'm not butchering his name. But he was in the book. He had a, a chapter or two in the book where he was speaking about how to prepare for a bear market. Why was he reading this chapter? Or why did he write this chapter? Because he owns a company, if I'm not mistaken, it's called Creative Planning. And what Creative Planning did, prior to 2009, they had, he had an assets and a management of 500,000. He navigated the bear market so perfectly, when it ended, he was at 2009. No, not when the bear market ended in 2009, his $500,000 turned into $1.8 for himself and his clients. 
So that is an awesome, awesome job that he did, how he navigated through the bear market and went from $500 million to $1.8 billion. And today he uh, he manages over $22 billion uh, in assets under management, which is immaculate. So he's someone who's very experienced, who saw the bear market coming. He was prepared. And when he was prepared, he taught how to get prepared, and he navigated through it perfectly. And one of the things is when, he, when I was reading, his, uh, reading the book, I noticed that my portfolio itself wasn't ready for a bear market. Myself, before that, I was anticipating, hey, if a bear market happens, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invest through it. But that's why I read. And uh, when I learned about him, I read some more things of him. And I actually called his office and, you know, maybe coming on to the show one day. But stay tuned for that. But in, in, uh, anyway, he gave us some very interesting tips that I'm going to give out right here on the show today, how to get prepared for a bear market. First, we're going to be talking about mental, the mental state. I think it was Benj uh, Benj Benjamin, not Benjamin Graham. His last name is Graham. I can't think of his first name. It's Warren Buffett's mentor. And the thing he said, one of the worst things uh, that hurts an investor is his emotions and himself. He's the hardest factor to get rid of outside of investing. When you're investing, when you see a bear market come, or when it does happen, it may happen tomorrow. It may happen two years from now. It may happen three years. But I'm not trying to time it. It was a time before when I was thinking I was going to, I'm going to just wait till the market you know, goes on sale and I'm going to jump in. Now you're trying to time the market. You know the people that, you know how many people out there that are successful at timing the market? Practically none, right? And we're not talking about regular people like you and I. We're talking about some of the best investors in the world, hedge funds. These guys have billions of dollars of resources around them. So this is the way I want you to think about it. When you see a bear market, the bear is not not anything to be scared of. The bear is your friend. When a bear market comes, it doesn't come lightly. I started investing in 2007, 2008. It was my first time entering the market, and it was absolutely the best time to enter the market for a seasoned investor, but the worst time for an amateur investor without having the financial literacy and knowledge. When the market starts to ha uh, collapse, I thought to myself, man, it's like it might be the end of the world because all you're seeing throughout the media, everybody's saying, hey, we had two wars. Hey, we have uh, gas prices was all time high. We was in Iraq. We was in Afghanistan. Gas prices at all time high. Unemployment was at all time high. Companies like Lehman Brothers, Ford, Bank of America, all these companies, AIG, the biggest insurance company, are collapsing. Collapsing. When I'm turning on the television and just watching the market collapse, the market dropped 54%. You imagine that? 54% drop in the market itself? That is crazy. But the thing, the thing to think about that, as the market collapsed, I became scared and I said, wow, well, I don't know what I'm doing investing. Every day I turn on the news, every day I open my portfolio, I'm losing money. I'd rather put my money in cash and wait till the bottom comes or figure out something else. Wrong amateur move. I should have kept investing throughout the bear market. But I, re I looked at the bear as a enemy versus a friend. When the bear is your friend, your bear, the bear is when you th see things go on sale for yourself. Now, we're going to get into how you can prepare for the bear market. For most people out there, one of the best investments you can make is, I mean, it's not one size fit all, but one of the best ways to invest in the stock market is not, instead of trying to pick stocks, is to pick the index. Pick an ETF, and I say ETF because it's low cost, a low cost ETF that tracks the S&P 500. You have mutual funds that do it, you have index funds that do it, but me personally, as what, my, what I know now, my knowledge now, I see an ETF as being one of the best resources to track the stock market. Now, the reason, the reason why I say this is that an ETF that tracks the S&P 500, a mutual fund that tracks the S&P 500, the index fund, or anything else that tracks the S&P 500, they all have the same performance. The only underlying difference I see is it may be Vanguard or maybe iShares, different companies that may do it, but at the end of the day, they all have the same objective. At the end of the day, the biggest difference is the fees. How much are the fees? If I'm going to get the same car, why pay more for it? 
And the lowest cost I know of right now is a Vanguard ETF by the symbol BOOO, which has an expense ratio of 0 0.04. So with that being said, I think that is uh, one of the best ways I would go. Now, don't confuse a bear market with a correction. A correction is less than two months. A bear market is when it goes over two months. 20% drop and it happens over two months, that is called you are now in a bear market. If it drops more than 20% and happens less than two months, now you're in what they call a correction. The stock market took a correction, a drawback. We all know Bitcoin is on the up and up and it's running like crazy. It may have experienced a drawback. So uh, if it's less than two months, it's a uh, a correction if it's more than two months it's a bad market now another thing I want you guys to think about we're going to get into how you can prepare yourself how to prepare for the bear market now I just said if you are in an index inside of your portfolio a good thing that was brought to my mind um, to my attention was government not government but bonds bonds you want to know what bonds are here's a quick one-on-one -on -one that the way he explained it what i thought was ingenious but it's very true four types of bonds right a bond is nothing but a loan you're loaning someone your money right this time you are the lender most of the times when we go get a car loan we're the person that takes the money this time you're going to lend someone else your money for an interest rate simple and easy now when you lend someone your money and they're going to pay you back with interest it's four ways it's done. You can lend it to the government and let it be called a government bond or a treasury bond. You can lend it to a, uh, a city to build cities and things uh, for a state to build different type of infrastructures, which they call a municipal bond. You have, when you loan to a corporation, that's called a corporate bond. And when you loan to a, another country, it's called maybe your quote unquote high yield bond. Now, let me break those down a little bit for you. A government bond is just like when you go to get a car. You have a low, uh, if you have good credit, meaning that you're trustworthy, meaning that the likelihood of you defaulting on this loan is pretty low, you usually get a low interest rate. But if you have a uh, low credit score, your trustworthiness is low, the likelihood of you not paying this loan back is pretty high, now you're a risky person to lend money to, so you may experience a high credit, you know, uh, uh, a higher interest rate. With that being said, that is called a high yield bond. So for a prime example, versus in the United States, investing into the United States versus investing into the Venezuelan government, maybe, you know, investing into a Venezuelan government is risky. By being that risky, they pay more of an interest rate. The U.S. government, they got good credit, the interest rates are pretty low. So you may get 1% for getting a bond from the government in the United States, but if, by getting one in Venezuela, it may cost you, it may, you may earn 10%. You may earn more. But by you earning more, then again, the likelihood of them defaulting is pretty high. So that's what I want you to think about. So the thing about it is, hey, a lot of people like to run to cash, but we all know in the investing world, cash, is trash. Cash is not good because it doesn't earn anything. It doesn't do nothing for you. But so if you are keeping your money into a regular account, a regular checking account, that's very low. A step above that is a savings account. A step above that is a CD. A step above that is not, not, a, not a CD, a money market, then a CD. But the thing is, you put your money or you hide your money, you put your money into a bond which you, where you have an income from it. Now that you have an income coming from your bond, if you're not being fluctuated with the market or anything like that, you know, you may be earning about 1%, you know, something like that, maybe a low percentage right now because, you know, we're in a very low interest rate society right now, but you're earning a nice 1% compared to leaving the savings account where you're going to earn maybe 0.25 or something like that. So, hey, you put your money in the bond where it earns money. Now, when your money is earning money, when the and you keep your credit low where well, you don't have to worry about having to sell bonds in a bear market that's a no-no because when a stock when the stock market goes down the last thing you want to do is to be the person that's selling your stock because you need to go pay bills or something like that so 
you want to have your stocks. You don't want to sell your stocks. You want to keep your stocks. If you have stocks, or AKA equities, or anything like that, you want to keep your stocks and ride out through the bear market. You want to buy more stocks in the bear market. So what you're going to do is you're going to have your money saved into a bond. Bonds are gaining you a nice interest rate. If the bond, if the market was to collapse, go into a correction or go into a bear market, you can now liquidate, AKA sell your bonds and buy stocks. Sell your bonds, then turn around and buy stocks. That's a great way to, because what you don't want to do is some people say, well, I'm going to leave my money in cash and wait on the next bear market. We don't know when the bear market can happen. I mean, think about it. If you thought the bear market was going to happen in 2017, like myself, along with a lot of other people, if you thought the bear market was going to happen in 2017, it could have cost you 20% return on your investment. Then you're getting in what is called trying to time the market. You don't want to be trying to time the market because if you can time the market out personally, please give me a call and I'd love to be your friend, <laughs> right? So most people can't time the market and don't even try to time the market. There's no need to time the market. So if I, instead of leaving my money in cash, I don't know when the next bear market may be. It may be it may happen in three years. But if I if the if I'm waiting on the bear market in cash, look how much money um, it costs me that I can potentially lose by leaving my money in cash. So I leave my money in bonds to earn some interest and I keep investing into the stock market. Who cares if it's at an all time high? If the market collapses, what you're gonna do is you're gonna liquidate, sell your bonds, and you're gonna buy equities. You're gonna buy equities throughout the bear market. If the market goes up, bear doesn't happen, you keep your bonds. So what does that mean? Today, what I did for myself personally, I know I needed to get some bonds. How can I buy bonds or whatnot, right? One way you can buy bonds is you can use ETFs to attract bonds. Now, I'm just going to give you guys an example of a government bond ETF that's tracked by um, uh, Vanguard, let's say, let's do a corporate bond, VCLT, VCLT, that's a corporate bond ETF. Now, you can go out there and get a corporate bond ETF, or you maybe can buy an ETF that uh, pays a nice return for you, maybe 1% or 2%, whatever the case it may pay you. And if you experience a downturn in the market, you can turn around and then sell this. Hopefully, this ETF is not collapsing itself, but you can sell that bond and then turn around and buy corporate stocks are going and invest into equities. Now, another thing to prepare yourself for the market, you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. You want to be diversified. The core of your uh, portfolio should be the index, the S&P 500, an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. That should be the core of your index. Then you want to have some mid cap. Then you want to have small cap. You know, you can get a, a mid cap ETF called VU. Get a small cap ETF. So you have your index at the bottom of your um, portfolio. Then you have your mid cap. Then you have your small cap. Then you have your bonds. Then you want to get into uh, real estate, which is REITs, real estate investment trusts, right? So we invest in real estate um, on stock in the stock market. Now you diversify. Also, you want to jump into an international stock, right? There are international ETF, I think it's MAS, something like that. It's like Far East, I can't remember the exact thing. I should have been prepared for it to give you guys that ETF, but it's international century, right? So you can invest internationally, you can have bonds, you can have uh, index, mid cap, small cap, and a real estate investment trust. Now you diversify because you're not overly invested into your own country. You have international, you have some bonds, you have small cap index, you have some real estate. So when the bear comes, you don't know what industry the bear market may hit. It may hit small cap, it may hit large cap, it may hit an index. You just don't know what it may hit. But whatever, whatever it hits, it shouldn't blow your whole portfolio up. And also, you can liquidate your bonds and turn around and buy different ETFs. So another way people like to do it is to, to, um, to benefit from a bear market. They like to go out and wait. So if you're in a bear market, if you think the bear market is going to go down, I wouldn't highly recommend this. They can go through derivatives. They can go out and they can buy put options. Put options give you the right to be able to sell a stock at a determined price in the future. How does that work? Let's say right now Google is trading for a thousand dollars, and you purchase the right to be able to sell it for, 
let's say twelve hundred dollars or nine hundred dollars, right? I'll just say it's twelve hundred dollars, whatever the case may be. Let's say uh, the price of Google drops to so Google's trading four thousand dollars. You purchase the right to be able to buy it or sell it at for nine hundred dollars for a month or two or whatever the case may be. If the stock drops down to six hundred dollars, you can exercise your contract and sell those stocks for a particular you know, for nine hundred dollars in the future, even though on the market they only worth five hundred. So it's a way it's a bearish prediction. I wouldn't recommend this uh because it has an expiration date. You know, you have to you know you can short the market. Shorten the market is when you borrow stocks and then go off and try to short sell and stuff like that. Something I wasn't be a big fan in trying to short the market in a time like this because if you was that good at it then um please like i said give me a call uh you know you can use etfs that have you can use reverse etfs that if the stock market drops one percent the etf goes up by one percent the stock market drops 50 percent the etf goes up 50 percent you can invest in inverse etfs to benefit as the stock market drops now there's something called leverage etfs so, you know, like I said, the inverse ETF, if it drops 1%, if the stock market drops 1%, your, the ETF goes up 1%. What if I told you that if the stock, instead of it going 1%, if the market drops 1%, instead of you getting 1%, you get 2 or 3. Those are leverage ETFs. Now, the thing about a leverage ETF is that if it goes against you, is it's going to go against you very bad but if it goes with you it's going to go with you very good so those are ways people can profit or try to profit but something i wouldn't recommend because now you're trying to get into day trading and time in the market and things like that over and over but one of the ways you can set your portfolio up is first number one diversify small cap mid cap index is the core of your um portfolio bonds Real estate investment trust. I'm not going to get into MLPs. That's for rich people. <laughs> so, but that's what you can do to prepare yourself and international. Those are ways you can prepare, diversify your portfolio. As soon as something hits, you can liquefy your bonds and get more into equities. View the bear as your friend. Know that the bear market will come again. Historically, it happens every three to five, three point five years is when a bear market comes. We haven't seen the bear since 2009, March of 2009. So where is the bear? Is the bear popping his head up tomorrow? We don't know. But you can be prepared by diversifying your portfolio, and when the bear comes, invest throughout the. Um, invest throughout the bear market use the bear as your friend so those are things that i have learned and those are things that i have shared now there are probably tons of other things you can do which is fine right but i just want to go over those as great tools for you to be able to great tools for you to be able to um benefit from the market, be prepared, and to slay the bear, as Tony Robbins said in his book, slay the bear. View the bear as your friend and slay the bear. By diversifying, you're limiting the impact that the bear will have on you, but now you're in a position to where you can actually sell bonds or cash out bonds or CDs. CDs sometimes have a time frame on them, bonds sometimes have a time frame, but you can sell these, just give me an example, sell your bonds, now you have cash to be able to invest throughout the bear market. Because in the bear market, cash is good to have. But you don't want to sit here and leave all your money in cash and wait on the bear. Because, you know, who knows? It may happen in five years. And with compounding interest, I could lose money in the future trying to wait on the bear. So don't wait on the bear. Just when it pops up, view it as your friend. View it as a sale when you go into a store. When you see stuff on the clearance rack, you know how you buy everything up? That's what you need to be the beauty bark uh the bear ass. It's an opportunity for you to be able to buy a lot of things on sale. So but as always guys, I think I hit on everything. How to prepare, diversify, and how to capitalize throughout a bear market. Because when a bear market happens, only two things can happen. It's either the end of America as we know it or it's going to be a rebound. In the last 32 times it has happened, in the last 115 years, it has been, it has rebounded. Every time it has rebounded, rebounded, and rebounded. So that is a great way to rebound from the bear market. So anyway, guys, that's going to be my time. View the bear as your friend 
and know that it's going to happen again. If you got any questions or issues, guys, don't forget to drop a comment below. Thank you guys for tuning. My name is Prince Dykes, the Prince of Investing. It's an honor for you guys to uh, tune on. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for more. And to the next video, podcast, or whatever you see me do goofy and crazy around the globe. Peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.